Bear Betts is back. NFL final week of the regular season. Many playoff spots to, to be determined. Lots of things up in the air. I'm your host, the Bear, Chris Felica. Jess Schwartz here in studio. I'm good to be back in the studio after a couple of weeks of, of being home. Now that I get to travel around with this wonderful thing and my nice little cobalt and whatever else uh, shoulder implant. I'm, I'm feeling feeling good, but happy to be back with you in studio. It beats it beat Zoom. It does. It's uh, How was your bagel this morning I got you? It, thank you, by the way. Yeah. You know, that's, he's a nice guy. Every week, being in Connecticut, the bagel's in New York. So much better. So much better and different than oh. what you get in Connecticut. I think it did growing up along in New York, it's, I think it's something to do with the water. I mean, it's, a, it's an unproven. They've said that, but then. But, they're, but, they're, but, but is it true? It's like, well, they, it's, so it's like bring, a wives tale. Probably. Well, right? There was a bagel. There's a bagel shop in San Francisco that imported New York water to San Francisco. And it was not this. It never ended up being the same. I mean, it's just like the environment in New York City. It, it, exactly. It's yeah. All, every, but by every week, a man, double egg. Ham and cheese on a, on a salt bagel. Yeah, my man, my man gets it done. I was so me. excited. I woke up this morning. I was so excited to go get a bagel. Oh, it's just so good. Once a week, man, it's the best. What's your what? Yeah, that's the thing. Once, what, what's your? What's so your, I today I went I went lox. So I went cream cheese, sliced lox, onions on a poppy it. bagel, toasted. You get capers or no? No capers. I don't mind them. Like my wife gets one with capers, and if she doesn't finish it, I will eat it. Um, and then some mornings I go with the uh, with, with the bacon, egg, and cheese on a plain bagel toasted. And then some. Look, I'm here every week. Obviously, there are some weeks that I have went and got like uh, I'll go to the deli and get corned beef hash for breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> with, with scrambled that. eggs. That's, yeah, that that's my. I love corned beef hash. I took the kids out to breakfast on Sunday uh, morning, and we got they got chocolate chip pancakes. I got corned beef hash. It was so good yeah, in Charlotte. It's, it's the one yeah, place that has it. Yeah, it's yeah. There's there, there's Ooh. one place in, in in Connecticut that that does it. It does it pretty good, but it's a little bit of a hike. So like, so it's few and far between from corned beef hash for me. But it, it's 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 fantastic. It is. It's it's, it's, it's so good. I feel like week 18 in the NFL is not going to be as good as corned beef hash. No, I, I, I was I was trying to think of that the appropriate segue, like something that's nowhere near as good as corned beef hash is <laughs> hash is the some of the some of the the dead games that we have uh, yeah. this week. But I mean, we, we, there's there's still plenty to talk about. The games that matter a whole lot, like Miami and uh, Buffalo, Miami and Buffalo, and, and, and Green Bay, and, and and some other things. And then there's Jets Patriots. Which Sammy P will have a play for us in gambling group chat on of that. Of course, he which, would. Is, which is of course. And look, the Buffalo thing is so interesting to me, Barry, because I think we all agree and and you know, they're one of the better teams according to the power rankings, DVOA, Vegas power rankings, um, excuse me there. And they might not make the playoffs. Yep. They lose to the Dolphins, which is not unconceivable. I mean, the, the Buffalo no. their variants per week. The Dolphins are at home. Um, they're beat up, but and then Pittsburgh wins, which has certainly happened. They're a favorite on the road to Baltimore. And Jacksville, um, they win their game against uh, the Titans as, as underdogs. Uh, Titans are dogs, I should say. Uh, then the Bills are out. Yep. And the Bills are out. So Crazy. they could go from two, the two seed, to out of the playoffs, which is uh, which is pretty wild. So that would be a fun way to end the the, the, uh, the regular season. I think mean, it's like, what, game 277, 270, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever it is. If the final game, it should, it should matter. But the Bills will know. Basically, what what where they stand based yes. on Steelers on Saturday. If they're in or not, but yeah. not for the AFC. Right, exactly. Yeah, the game for the AFC. So, lot to lot, lot to get to and bear as usual. We, we cover all in the gambling group chat, buddy. Yep, it is covered all. Um, I did not expect to get a, a, a wager in the uh, in the Jets Patriots game though, which Sammy no. provided for. So, uh, we have all of that next. It's going to be uh, me, Bear, Will Hill, Sammy P. We talk uh, NFL Coach of the Year. Comeback player of the year odds as well. There's still some some markets out there that we want to hit in the futures and all the games for this week. How to play them? How do we play games where uh, teams may may not care? Uh, one team in, one team out, things do like we, that. So do we want to get my group chat. two two picks here before we go to the gambling group chat. Oh yes, you have picks. I forgot. Yeah, I'm thinking of the college yeah. episode. Sorry, we have two. Bear I, I was two picks. Say we're we're, we're, we're burying sorry. the lead. We are burying the lead. I, Bear I, has I feel picks. slighted. Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I might buddy. have to. I might have to go home and do the show from home. Again. I did shame you into doing a best bet later. You though, did. Yes, you great. did. Yeah, peer yes. pressure got the best. Peer bet. pressure. I was so excited talking on the group chat. Let's talk about the bets that Bears made for this week. Let's start with the first one here: the NFC West battle, Seattle Seahawks at Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals plus three. Seattle's eight and eight. They need a win plus a Packers loss or tie to earn a wild card berth. They're eight six and two against the spread this season. Cardinals are four and twelve. 
They're one win away from hitting their over win season total, which mm -hmm. I, would be bad news for, I think, both of us. Mm. They're anything against a spread bear. We're really in here. And, and I, I mean, maybe reverse psychology, maybe not. Um, but I like Arizona plus the points this week. I, I think it's clear with what we've seen the previous day. Like, like they don't care about uh, locking up the highest potential best best pick that they can, they, yeah. that they can have. Uh, Gannon, I think, wants to know what Kyler Murray can do. If there was ever a time where they were going to maybe kind of lick the stamp and mail it in, it would have been trailing by 15 yeah. in Philadelphia in the third quarter. You know what? Clayton Toon, go, go have at it, and we'll just lose out. But it, it, they dominated the, the Eagles, especially in the second half, running the ball, pushing them around. Um, they're going to have two top 20 picks. Uh, if Kyler is indeed their quarterback, they, they, they know what they have there. And look, see, Seattle is a team that – I haven't been able to figure out most of the year. I thought they would have showed last week against Pittsburgh at home in a game that they absolutely had to have. That just make that be a theme for this yeah. week. All because you got to have a game doesn't mean you're going to get yes. it. Yes. And uh, I like Arizona. I like Arizona here plus the points. I, I, I think Seattle's defense has a ton of holes, and I think uh, Arizona might be able to exploit them again this week. I started counting that Arizona under four and a half win total there before uh, before it cashed. Yeah, so was... I got. I'm. I'm not. On Seattle per se, I just need Seattle to win, so I can. And that's what makes Week 18 kind of fun, though. There's some of these wagers where you have props where you're like, "Well, yeah. do I hedge on my prop? Do yeah. I? How do I treat this one?" And Arizona, uh, I, you know, I, I guess money line would be way to hedge on that, but um, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no, I can't. No, all right, we got one more game for now before uh, best bets later in the show. Uh, the Denver Broncos at the Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are favored by three in this game. Broncos are eight and eight. They just won last week with Jared Stidham as their starter. They're six and nine, excuse me, six, nine and one against the spread. Raiders seven and nine, uh, nine, six and one against the spread are those Vegas Raiders. Where are we going here, Bear? I think Denver's defense will travel. Yeah. I, I like the Broncos plus the points. Again, Raiders offense that uh, ha has really struggled. I mean, they, they, did, they were okay last week in the backdoor. Backdoor uh, cover. Backdoor Oof. against the Colts, who I, who I really could have used last week, but. Uh, d didn't happen, but I, but I think Stidham going on the road here again against the Raiders. I I I, I, I like Denver. Sure, they're not playing yeah. for anything, but it's a it, two teams that don't like each other. Sure. And again, this is another one where uh, I've got an alt win total on the Raiders over seven and a half. So this is another uh, tricky spot. And in an ideal world, maybe the uh, the Broncos get up in this game, yeah. and I can maybe play something with the Raiders getting points or laying a or, or getting a plus price on the on the on the money line. But uh. Uh, I, I like Denver here with that defense, and I think they'll do enough offensive, offensively with Stedham to uh, to go to Vegas and cash that Raiders under seven and a half. Points. I'm just sort of curious why the Raiders are three point favorites in this game. I, I don't know. I mean, like what what home field? But it, is it really a home field? I mean, I can't. No again, can, 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 can you really can you really see a bunch of Broncos fans going there though? Or this game? Who, that... Are Raider fans going this game? <laughs> There's nothing to play for. Yeah. All right. So Bear has Arizona plus three and the Broncos plus three so far. Go ahead. Now now you can get us into the gambling. I know you're Thank so you. excited about I was the gambling. Excited, yeah. Well, I, I just want everyone to hear Sammy's play on the in the in the in the weather in New England. All right. Time for gambling group chat now. Me, the Bear, Will Hill, Sammy P cover everything NFL, including the future markets, anything to play. And that we talk extensively about how to feel about, about these week 18 games. I play the ones that matter, that don't matter. Talk about all that next. Here is the Gallon Group Chats. Final week of the NFL season is here. At least for the regular season. So final regular season gambling group chat with Will, Sammy Pete, Jeff. And uh, so many opinions and thoughts on the final week of the regular season. Like, do you bet it? How do you bet it? Can you can, can you win? Or it's, I mean, because you, you don't know who's playing in a lot of instances. Some people like the fact that they think they have an edge. Some people want no part of it. Like, I, I think I think it's kind of in between because I, I think you can find some vulnerabilities in the line. But at the same time, well, I, I think some of these games or most of these games already are kind of the taxes put in there in the number because it's like uh, – Steelers, Steelers, for example, like favorite over the Ravens, like everyone that Steelers are in a must win. And again, what's the, what's the Dr. Bob saying? If you're in a must win situation, you must not be that good. But 
it, it, it's kind of tough in some of these situations to to be, to be able to say, I know the Ravens are playing their backups. Uh, and must wing doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to cover three and a half in Baltimore. Yeah, I love week 18. I love the variance. I love the fact that we don't know anything, but that means the books don't know anything. So we're, we're on equal footing. And if we get the information first, we, we can bet it uh, accordingly. So I like that. There's a little bit of NFL preseason to it. And you got to be diligent. You got to put the work in. But uh, you, you mentioned, I think you hit the right word, tax. There, there's definitely a tax with this where, you know, these teams that need to win or are supposed to win, they have the incentive, they have the motivation that gets built in, overbuilt into the line. And you could use a different word for motivation. There's pressure. There's pressure on the Packers to speak against the Bears. There's no pressure on the Bears. There's pressure on the Jags to beat the Titans. There's no pressure on the Titans. So, yeah, the motivation gets way, way too built into the line and creates some value the other way. It doesn't mean, you know, the dogs get through here. But I think there's a bunch of games this week where one team needs to win, one team doesn't, and that creates value on their team. And we see it every year. Was it Jags, Colts two years ago? The Colts are monster favorites against the Jags, and the Jags just buried them. Last year, Lions, Packers, yeah. Lions get eliminated. Oh, they're not going to carry in Green Bay. They just got knocked out. Packers have everything to play for. Lions go in there fast and loose. They, you know, they're faking punts. They're going for it on fourth down. Lions win the game. So sometimes these teams with nothing to play for play really well. I remember the Bears actually hired Matt Eberflus after that game that Will just talked about. He was the defensive coordinator. Right. And I thought to myself, that's the guy you're going to hire to fix the – you just gave up a million <laughs> yards to Jacksonville, and Jacksonville didn't care. That was, that was a nice little trip down memory lane. Um, but – to the point about must win, and I, I throw air quotes up for those of you that aren't watching, must win means you probably did something wrong over the course of the season, right? Like, and you know, Dr. Bob has said it, Chris Andrews has told me that for six years now, if you must win, you must not be that good. And there's a lot of truth to that. The perfect example and the first bet that I made, and I would still make now at this number at four and a half, is you have a, a Tampa Bay team that needs to win to get in. And then you have a, a Panther team that's, Two and 14, right? So it's it's so easy. Well, the Bucs need this game. Well, yeah, but the Panthers also hate the Bucs. And, and pressure is also something that's impossible, I think, for some people to quantify. How much is pressure worth, right? I mean, if this was this easy for Tampa to win, this line is six, six and a half. But it, it's all baked into the line here. And I took five and a half. I hope it gets back to five. I'd take a little more. But even at four and a half, I will take Carolina. It's not going to be popular. People are going to go, you can't take a team with two wins. Well, the hell I can't because I already did. So I just, <laughs> just be careful with teams that are 500. But Bear, yeah. the Bucs are 8-8. Eight and eight. The Bucs are not world beaters. The Bucs are good. They're not great. And by no means is Tampa minus 4.5, 5, 5.5 away of. As someone with the Bucs uh, under 8.5, I mean, we, we can prove that well, tax right there. The game, these teams played a month ago in Tampa Bay. The line was three and a half. By the way, Carolina only lost by three and covered, but now you're flipping home fields and we're up to four and a half. That just shows, hey, you're just, they're over inflating this line big time. Yeah, they are. And as someone with a, a Tampa under eight and a half season win total, I would, uh, I would do a lot of things for a uh, for a Panthers outright win. Jeff, you going to go to the prove game? Prove it. I'm not going to the prove game. Prove it. Let's, here, guys. Let, let's uh when when we see a bowl season right for college football and you see these teams that always opt out to, and players not caring right those are rosters that are completely gutted all right in the NFL take the Ravens for example they're gonna sit like five starters that's it the rest of right. the team is playing and there's a big difference obviously from Lamar Jackson to to is it Tyler Huntley's playing this game like there's a there's a difference obviously. But the rest of the team is still playing. <laughs> There's not enough guys to sit out an entire first string. Sure. So you might be without Lamar Jackson and Odell and and maybe like your best defensive player, maybe and Kyle Hamilton probably. Like, like, okay, you're down five guys. The rest of the team is still there. The number one seed, the rest of the team, like the Niners, right? They're going to sit Brock Purdy and Trent Williams and Christian McCaffrey. The rest of the team is still playing. And so you you can't look at these games and, and, and say to yourself, well, the whole the whole squad's not there. I mean, the Browns are getting seven points against the Bengals. The Browns are playing. Miles Garrett probably won't play, right? Joe Flacco ain't gonna play. The rest of the number one defense in the NFL is gonna play. <laughs> like so, so don't think that these teams are just gonna give up because they don't need to win. Their backups wanna play, they wanna shine. It might be the only opportunity all season a guy's gonna start a quarterback. 
to show what they can do for next year to get good film out there. And so just, just be careful of thinking that a team that is, that is not playing for anything is not playing for anything because the coaches are still coaching. The players are still playing. Everyone's still trying to win that football game. What is it? Seven, seven and actives or five a game. I think it's now five. I think it ends up being five to seven. You have 48 dressing players. I think you have 53 in the roster. They call it, they have a, the, the COVID year changed the rules. Now it's a little convoluted. You call it practice squad players, but only a certain number of times a season. Um, but it's 48 guys on game day. And so again, like you can't sit everyone. And also too, the, the, the real funny thing, I saw this long thread on Twitter from a guy who was like, got to bet these 13 props over this week because guys have <laughs> incentives. And it's like the, 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 you know, the numbers weren't even up yet. You know, there was like right. Odell needs 400 yards. Bet Odell's over. You're like Odell's not going to play this week. <laughs> like, <laughs> just be careful betting players that need incentives to be hit because they're going to tax those numbers too, guys. So just just, yep. just be careful of those in Week 18. Look, look, look at it, the the two games on Saturday: Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Houston, Indianapolis. Uh, the 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 Houston Indianapolis line has now flipped. Uh, CJ Stroud played last week. Uh, Colts, I had them last week, probably should have covered three and a half, didn't, but that's uh, neither a story for neither here nor there. Um, it's interesting because I, I think, and not just to turn it into something about this game, I mean, we've talked a lot about the award markets, uh, Will. Like, Stefanski is a huge favorite in the coach of the year market, but this is a winning in game. So you're, you're telling me that the Colts or the Texans win Get to 10 wins in the playoffs, like D'Amico Ryans or Shane Steichen wouldn't have a, a case for coach of the year, Will? If there's if there's somebody that's going to unseat Stefanski as the favorite, to me, it would be the winner of this game. I don't have the Ryans number in front of me, but that would be the way I would go. Obviously, you know, Steich, uh, Stefanski's minus 1,000. I mean, they're making it so where it's unbettable. He's going to now start Stefanski as fifth starting quarterback of the year, which I've never even heard of, and still make the playoffs. I guess Ryan's has a shot. I mean, I don't know. It, it's really hard trying to figure out. Once these voters start talking, you feel like you know even less because we've heard a couple of them this week on various shows mm -hmm. go through the thought process. It's like, man, you just take everything you knew and you sort of throw it out the window. So, you know, if, I, if you wanted to make a bet, obviously it's late in the game. This is about as late as you can make it. I don't. I think once the games end Sunday, they pull these markets. So now's your last chance. Right. I don't know, Bear. Would you would you bet Ryan's right now, or is this like you know what? I'm gonna throw my hands up. I didn't win this this market if I don't have Ryan's or Stefanski, and I'm just I'm done betting it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a little overexposed. Like, I'll be okay. Like, if Stefanski does win, I will come out ahead because I got him at twenty-two to one, uh, a, a, a bit back. But um, humble my, brag. My, my biggest plays were, were, yeah, humble brag. Yeah, my biggest plays were Shanahan and then, and then uh, Tomlin as well. Those were my. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm just gonna sit pat and, and whatever happens happens because I, I do like a, like, like a side in this game that I'll get into. Uh, bear, bear. I thought about in, all in, you in guys best segment. when, when Dan Campbell went for uh. two from the seven <laughs> down one, Mensa I Bowl. thought about all of you guys. Not only did my life flash before <laughs> my eyes, but I thought about all of you. I thought in, in what world <laughs> did we ever think this guy was a good X's and O's coach? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I get it. They got a little hose down the People stretch. Did. Call should have went their way. But I un I understand going from the two. But when you go for it again from the seven, I mean, like, oh, such an idiot. He's such an idiot. You, you know what the, the crazy thing is? Like, I didn't necessarily have a huge problem with it. And, and, I, and I know oh. I'm in the, definitely in the minority on that. Because... Your your playoff seating position was pretty much locked up. You you benefit yeah. nothing by going to oh, what happens if what happens if Montgomery or I'm gonna St. Brown or Goth get hurt uh, in, in overtime for what the 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 minimal minimal chance that you were gonna be able to m maybe be the two seed instead of the they three. They could have been the, the two seed though. That would have happened. But but how much does that really? Like you can, you may play the Rams either way. Like I, I, I don't know if that, I, I don't know. Or, or, or are you going to play the Packers again who already beat you? Like, I, I don't think there was a big difference playing being the two or the three. You're going to get a home game regardless. 
I, I don't know. Go, go, I'd go rather for be home it. round two. But I think yeah, I, I think, want that two three game at home. But I think yeah. But I also think he he did it out of like rage. Like it wasn't like yeah, a, it wasn't like an true. analytical decision. Like you know what, we got a chance to win from the seven. It was like I'm very angry over, because yeah. the official screwed us. Screw them. I'm going for from the seven. Like that that to me is is if that's the reason why, then then yeah. But if it's a win probability thing, okay, great. Um, but you know the officials did all four of us a solid, right? Because that Dan Campbell coach of the year wager just vanished <laughs> as soon as as soon as he reported seventy as eligible. Um, so that was a. I just thought about that at the end of that game. Like oh that that wager won't hit now. We talked about. This all season long about Dan Campbell should not have been coach of the year, and uh, he will not win coach of the year now. So, so the team that won that game, Dallas, obviously they, they were the big recipient last week of the break there, along with the absolute second half collapse by the Eagles yeah. um, a, a, against the Cardinals. Now the Cowboys can win the NFC East, and we got them that we gave those guys out at a good number uh, before the, the, that schedule stretch uh, earlier in the year. So now you're a they're 13 point favorite against the commanders here. Seems like a lot of points though here. Well, like, like I don't think they're going to lose, but at the same thing, well, you want to lay two touchdowns on a road. I know, I know you blew them out already once this year, but it just feels like a, a big number. And, and I, and yeah, everyone can have their opinions on Ron Rivera like they do, but I can't imagine. I mean, this will be his final NFL game as a head coach. He's not coming back. And I, I can't imagine he's going to get another head coaching job at, at this age off of this, uh, tenure in Washington, but, but, but I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'd want to take the 13, but I certainly wouldn't lay it. Would you? It would be, it'd be take it or nothing. And we talked about the Cowboys to win the division uh, throughout the year because the Cow the Eagles had this rough stretch of games where, you know, they, they played a bunch of tough teams. We didn't know that stretch of tough teams, tough games was going to include the Arizona Cardinals with a 15 point lead at home <laughs> in Philadelphia. Uh, but that's what ended up costing Philly, the division. It's interesting. This was the same scenario last year, except it was flip flop. Dallas played Washington, Philly played the Giants, and Dallas on, that their, their game only mattered if the Giants upset Philly. And remember, Dallas came out and laid an egg, so uh, maybe keep that in mind with the Philly Giants mm -hmm. game. To me, the, you take the points here just because Dallas is not the same team on the road; they're not the same team outdoors on grass. Again, you, you just compare the lines. These teams played on Thanksgiving. That game was relatively competitive in like the third quarter when Dallas pulled away. And that line was around 13, 14 points. So now you're flipping home field and he's got the same line. You're just, you're really, you know, taxing th this idea of motivation. I just don't think Dallas is the same team um, on the road outside and Washington, you know, they can play fast and loose, fake a punt, go for it on fourth down. So you know, am, I, am I dying to bet Washington plus the 13? No, but I'm certainly not laying it here. I mean, I, I'm not <sighs> Washington's last four games, guys, they lost uh, 30 to the Dolphins. They lost the Rams by eight. They lost the Jets and the Niners. They lost by 17. I mean, they're kind of just like dead. I don't, I don't know if I, I'm not laying with the Cowboys, but I, I think the idea that Washington's going to play well this game is kind of a farce. Like they're, they're not, they're not a good football team. There's no motivation right now. They were slow. They were, you know, they were slightly close against the Niners and did not cover that, that, you know, that 14, 15 point spread. So I, I think that, I'm staying away from this game, but I, I don't think the Commanders plus 13 is the wager either because I don't think they're going to be very competitive in this game. Sammy, we're getting back to the the the, the Bears here. Bears, Packers, um, Pack win and in. Uh, obviously, on the college pod yesterday, we had a, a pretty lengthy discussion about the, the Bears offseason situation and should they extend field, should they trade the pick, what they should do. So if you haven't listened to that, go back, download that college pod and we can get in. You know, we had a pretty good conversation there's no need to double it up here but again this is one of those winning in Packers must win and they're in but minus three I, I don't know I, I think I've seen a lot of people this week making the case for the Bears so uh go ahead and make the case or refute it I actually like the under in the game 44 um I do think things get interesting though if Chicago bounces Green Bay out of the playoffs and again we talked about it yesterday that's going to be a different conversation in that room if Fields bounces love because they kind of came in around the same time. Um, but 44, I mean, guys, it's January and Green Bay at Lambeau. You know, <laughs> like this is not this is not 75 and sunny in South Beach. It, it's, it's hard to throw the football in that weather. I covered a couple games on the sideline there. Assuming the weather is what I believe it's going to be this weekend, it's not going to be ideal to throw the football. These defenses have been better. Chicago's defense has been a lot better since getting Montez sweat, these two teams also know what the other team is going to do. I mean, they're division rivals. So 
I'm inclined to bet under 44, but I, I only have two bets. We'll talk about the other one. It's in my backyard uh, in New England. I have Carolina plus five and a half, and uh, I'm invested in Jets, Pats. I, I, if you made me bet Chicago Green Bay, though, <laughs> it'd be under 44. I, I, okay. Jets, Pats. I, I got to hear this, Sammy. <laughs> you, 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 I need to expand on your Jets, Pats thoughts. I, I got to hear this. It, it's under 30 and a half. I mean, it's Trevor Simeon and Bailey Zappi in a blizzard. I don't know um, how much more you not exactly like I've given some rocket science takes. This one is about as square as it gets, but good Lord. I mean, I, we're watching the news this week in Boston and it's like, we're going to get a million inches of snow. And I'm, I'm thinking, yep. okay, if this actually comes halfway true, you, you know, what's going to happen. Like on Sunday, we're going to show the pregame camera. And the snow is going to be falling and the wind's going to be ripping and people are going to go, oh, I like the under. So I just I have a feeling that even at 30 and a half, it's still not low enough. And you just have two offenses that just they stink right now. And you have backup quarterback against backup quarterback. Belichick usually suffocates the Jets. Patriots have a bunch of injuries on the offensive side of the ball. 10 to 7, 13 to 10. 14 to 12, something weird, whatever. I just, I'm under 30 and a half. And I tell you, this number probably keeps coming down too, especially if the winter weather actualizes. Yeah, well, wouldn't it be perfect in like the final, I mean, maybe the final Belichick game in New England against the Jets? Yeah, give, give me give me something like, yeah, give me like 12-9 or something, just some just total score, gami score in that game. There's no way that the New England kicker makes three field goals in a game, though. Like, that's the problem, is that he's going to miss. It, 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 in the snow and the wind, that, that guy's going, what, one for three, Sammy? So that he's not going to make like any that. kicks either. I mean, it's gonna be a... <laughs> at, the bottom, at the bottom of the weather scale, like, we're talking about, you know, 15-mile-an-hour winds, 31 degrees. If it's worse, I oh. mean, you can't make the total low enough. Jeff, you played in some of these cold games. I mean, no. you can't even feel your fingers. Yeah, it sucks. So backup quarterbacks, horrible receivers, schematics are just atrocious. I mean, it's just – it's going to be one of the worst football games, so, I think, of it, the season. I won't watch it, but I will bet the under. You'll watch it. You'll watch it. I'll so watch it. we talked it. earlier about the motiv the motiv <laughs> the motivation for, for teams that, like – you know, the Ravens, for example, that are in the playoffs. I would say this, though. The Jets and Patriots football players just want to go home. They do not want to get hurt. <laughs> they don't want to, like, have anything bad happen. I've been in these games, unfortunately, and you just try to not be hurt. Like, that's the goal of this game. And so, to your point about, like, low scoring, the weather's bad, guys are going to hit each other just enough to make a tackle, just enough to block. Just enough to look like you're playing hard, but no one's going extra. No one's trying to, you know, dive and make a crazy play. It's just not going to happen this game because guys, they're on these teams, do not want to be hurt in the offseason. They don't want to do anything that, that to, to jeopardize their future contract status. This is absolutely a game where I could see just run the football, get on out of here, be done with it, and go into the offseason. Obviously, the Patriots are going to have a new coach, most likely. The Jets are going to look forward to Aaron Rodgers coming back. Like, just a game where guys... Do not care. Do not want to be there. I, I, unfortunately, I've been in some of these. That's exactly what happens. You just play to not get hurt. You just play to do enough and move on to next season. Were you one of those guys that came out in pregame warm-ups with, like, no shirt on? No, I actually have a firm rule on that. If you, if I see you do that, I bet against your team. Tough guys. Yeah. it's like if you, Something Dan Campbell and the Lions would do, Will. It yeah. would. I bet against them if I saw that. I, I just figured you'd be one of those guys who come out with the dry fit on and all no, no, hoodie, hoodie, like like full sweatpants, hoodie, <laughs> beanie, gloves. Like I'm doing the full thing. I'm not. I'm not. Why would you want to be cold? I never understood this. Before a game, you want your body to be freezing cold and shivering and using up more energy to stay warm than just being warm. It's going to be cold anyways in the sidelines. It's, you don't get used to the cold by warming up shirtless. I agree. It's ridiculous. I bet against you immediately if I see that. So, so if I see like the Bears players in Lambeau warming up like shirtless, automatic wager on the Packers. Yeah, well, one team that I did bet against already. This, the, the, I, I bet against the Seattle uh, Mariners, Supersonics, uh, the city of Seattle in general. Good. I bet against Washington, and it's, uh, I'm just anti Seattle. I, I mean, I took the Cardinals plus the three. Like, I don't think they care about like. The, the draft pick, they're going to have two picks in the top 20. I think they truly, clearly they don't. I, I think 
<laughs> yeah, like, 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 and maybe this, maybe this is a reverse psychology because the, I know Will and I have the under four and a half season win total, and they torpedoed the three and a half last week by by, by winning that game in, in Philly. But look, Seattle's a team I really haven't been able to figure out uh, most of the season. I thought they'd show up last week, and and that was like the best offensive game that the Steelers were played in forever. But it's it's clear Arizona does not have the worst uh, roster in the league. It's clear they're trying. It's clear Gannon wants to know what Kyler Murray can do. Uh, I took the Cardinals plus three. Like 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 Sammy, do you have any? Do, do you hate that? Do you like that? Would you go the other way? Because again, Seattle's one of those teams that needs to win and get some help uh, in order to get into the playoffs. It's a pass. I mean, I lean over. You can get 47 and a half. Both of these offenses clearly have big playability. I love the Seahawks receiver room. They take shots down the field. And and Kyler is Kyler's one of those guys where he can turn nothing into something. I, I lean over. Not going to play the game. I did check the tape, though, boys. Of the four Arizona wins this year, on this show, before two of them, I said there is no business that Arizona should win this game. Like, there is no reason. <laughs> and they won both of them. Not one, they won two of them. So I, I guess I'm done trying to figure out what the Cardinals should do. Yeah, I think that's go, important. Go ahead and, go ahead and say, Jake. Well, well, just like these teams don't think like go they ahead. do. Like, oh, they should lose, get the pick. They're not going to yep. care. Like, everybody cares. But be, the, the Chargers aside after the, uh, that final Staley game, like these teams, they go out, they try, they play. So, yeah, I'm guilty of this too. Like, oh, they're, you know, they're going to tank or they do this. I and mean, we saw it with the Texans last year, that final game. They have no reason to win. They want the number one pick. They, they said, screw the number one pick. We're going to go out, we're going to throw a Hail Mary, and we're going to win the game. These, these players, these coaches, they don't think like us. They're just thinking not to get hurt, right, Jeff? In those games, yes. But that you're trying to win, though, like I keep telling, I, you know, people do not understand what tanking is. They're trying to win. Like even the Broncos last week, there was a whole discussion about, well, they don't want to win because they said to Russell Wilson. Right. No, they tried to win and they beat a bad Chargers team because the Chargers stink. But like they're trying to win the game. Coaches and players, even the games where I'm saying, try not to get hurt. Mm-hmm. You're trying to win the game still. Like you're coaching to win the game. And so that never stops happening. It ha- you know, that one that one time where Doug Peterson pulled the quarterback like, in the fourth quarter of a game three years ago. That's like the one time where they like blatantly were trying to tank, you know? Otherwise, it, it doesn't happen that way. And so um, just take that into consideration when, when it comes to some of these teams this weekend. Yeah, I, and I like the Bron- – I mean, I had the Broncos last week. I, I remember sitting here and be like – Oh, you actually we were, you we weren't were, here. Last sitting week. at home, where right? I wasn't here last sure. week. You're right. I was sitting at home, and we kind of I joked like, "Any any takers on the uh, the Broncos Chargers?" And we're like, "No." And I was like, "Okay." And then uh, by by like Sunday, there I am holding hold holding Broncos minus minus three and a half in my in my pocket, and uh, it, it came through. I like the Broncos again this week plus three. Like again, the the, the Raiders uh, again, offensively, I think they got a million problems. Uh, and again, maybe a little bit of reverse psychology go, going. Uh, we, I mean, having a, Ra- a Raiders under seven and a half season win total, I need the Broncos to win here. So I mean, in an ideal world, the uh, Broncos will get up and then I'll be, I'll be in a position where I can kind of take the Raiders and uh, and get off that. But but I, I think the Denver defense will play well again, and, and I like them plus the three. Uh, you want any part of this, Sammy? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Will, go ahead and say nope. I'm with Sammy. I, I like a bunch of games this week. This isn't one of them. This is, you know, there's so many different playoff scenarios. The AFC in particular is fascinating. We're like, the Bills could be the two. They could be a, they could be out all together. They could be hosting the Colts, which is as cushy a matchup as you can get, or they can be at Kansas City. So it's all over the map. I think Broncos Raiders actually has an effect, even though neither of these teams can make the playoffs, where this affects some of the tiebreakers where this involves a Steelers. So, mm-hmm. so many moving parts uh, with this, this these playoff scenarios, but this is not uh, one I got involved in. I know we talked about Steelers Ravens in the beginning. Like uh, I, I do like the Ravens. I think that's just a massive over adjustment. I don't know if we ever gave out picks on that. But like, just say everybody's playing, everybody's healthy and motivated. Ravens are probably eight, nine, ten, nine and a half. What, what would you say, Timmy? Ten point favorites at home against the Steelers. So now they're getting three and a half. So we're going to adjust this fourteen points. Like, like a, a couple players. I know it's Lamar. I know he's the MVP. But Huntley's a great backup. A fourteen point adjustment. I, I, I don't know if I buy that. And you know, Jeff, you could probably speak to this. I think when you have nothing to play for. 
it does help being at home. I think these teams that are just playing out the string and the Ravens, you know, they have the buy. They're not, there's no incentive for them in this game. Being at home, I think helps. You get, I think you get a little boost from the crowd. So to me, Ravens plus three and a half plus four. I think that's a good bet. These games, these Steelers Ravens games are always 20 to 17. So that's yeah. a ton of points. I mean, look, so the, the thing about like, you said like kind of no motivation to play. From, a, from a, a big picture, yeah, you're absolutely right. The Ravens don't have – this game means nothing to that. But you mentioned Tyler Huntley. I don't know his contract situation. Probably on a one-year deal. I believe it's the first game he started this year, right, because Lamar's been healthy all season. Yes. This is a huge game for him. It's, yep. a, it's a game where he gets film. Like, Tyler Huntley's going to go out trying to win this football game because the motivation for him is to get the, the good film and to be able to say, hey, look, guys – Here's my film from this year. You know, it, it, and he might not be back with Baltimore. I know his, his contract status. So individually, the players, again, on good football teams, not, not, not Jets Patriots, on good football teams, there is motivation to continue to play hard. And so when you have the Steelers who, I mean, Mason Rudolph, I, I mean, eventually it comes to an end, right? I mean, the, the Rudolph thing, like, it's not going to last well, forever. I would have thought so, too. You have a Ravens defense that is still good, minus a couple starters in this game. And I just don't expect the Steelers to play like they have the last couple of weeks. They're, they're, they, 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 they hit their, their over eight and a half, which is great. Mike Tomlin can say now he's been over 500 every single season, but I don't expect this to be just an easy win for them because they have to win. The Ravens don't have to. I want to, I want to, I want to, Will, you Go and ahead, I were sorry. talking about something earlier. No, I was going to say, Will, Will and I were talking about something earlier this week. And I want to get your opinion on it, Jeff. Yeah. And guess, guess, Will, you mentioned it earlier about how we tend to overthink things and think things through. Like, you had an interesting point about, like, doesn't it help the Ravens to, to, to maybe, it, do you lose that way? Maybe the Steelers, like, you'd rather have the Steelers in than the Bills. But again, you're laughing and, shaking, you're laughing and shaking your head. So this no. is something, again, that, that I, we're, we're sitting here as better as handicapping, looking for angles. And, and and that's something that would never cross no. the mind of anyone in the Ravens. No. Like, you know what? No we can keep Baltimore. We can keep Buffalo out. But if we just kind of, you know, let up and let, let the Steelers in and we'll get them. I, I, like, if you're a player on the Ravens, let's just say, and you're driving down to win the game, and you just, like, take a knee to lose on purpose, <laughs> what are you going to do to turn to Jim Harbaugh and be like, dude, John Harbaugh, sorry. Like, what are we doing, dude? Like, I, I want to win this game. I, I'm playing this game. Like, let's win the football game. Like, You can go, you can go Stevin like, Smith, Arizona I, State, and just kind of like, chuck up a I, three, I, throw a ball. I just don't think that winning – I don't <laughs> think winning organizations treat, treat games like that, right? And – there's no guarantee, obviously, Buffalo has to lose for that to happen, right? And then I think Jacksonville has to win, right? So Jacksonville wins, Pittsburgh wins, Buffalo loses, their Buffalo's out, Pittsburgh's yeah. in. Um, so no, I don't think Baltimore thinks about that at all. <laughs> um, because okay. then obviously, then there's another round of playoffs before you figure out who you're even playing. There's no guarantee you're even playing, you know. The, so I no, they don't think about that at all. There's no thought about that. Um, I think even the flip side is probably true. They want to keep the Steelers out of the playoffs. They want to make right. sure that they're out of the It's a rival. They don't want the rival to be in the playoffs, I would imagine. So the, I, I think there's motivation to just keep them out of the playoffs altogether. Sammy, you were going to say that's something. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say they hate the Steelers more than they hate the Bills. You know, like it's their division rivals. And Will brought this up about the, the true number here. Like if let's say Baltimore is fully healthy and Lamar is going to play. My number is like 12 and a half, 13. Because I got Baltimore 10 points better on a neutral. So you give them the two and a half, obviously. Um, I mean, it's a huge swing. And, and the other thing, I don't want to mince my words here because I'm not trying to compare Lamar Jackson to Tyler Huntley. But the offensive yes, schematics are. don't really change. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like it's, yep. it's not like you're going from Lamar mm -hmm. to Joe Flacco or Lamar to Trent Dilfer. You're going from a, a mobile guy to a mobile guy. And I, I think that's easier when the backup comes in. You don't have to change all that much. So, look, guys, this might be the most tax line of the entire season, given the fact that Pittsburgh must win, Baltimore is benching all of its starters, and there's this angle that maybe Baltimore wants Buffalo win. That is all built into the line. Again, I repeat, this line is over 10 if everybody's healthy, and Baltimore's laying 10. So now Pittsburgh's laying four. You do the math. Speaking of math, I'm looking. Do we? Do you think we're going to get a six in Jacksonville, Tennessee? You think it's going to go the other way? Well, they rule Lawrence, and they probably go to six, right? I would think so. And I wouldn't you take Tennessee yes. plus six? 
Yeah. yeah. Like, who the hell are the Jaguars to be favored by a touchdown over anybody right now? And even if Lawrence is playing, is he healthy? I mean, that's the other thing, too. He's played terrible the last month or so. And, and, and you wonder, too, what you're hearing out of Tennessee with Vrabel. Like, it, it doesn't seem like all is – it doesn't seem like he and Carthon are kind of on the same page. Like you, you wonder, like, is this maybe his final – maybe he's pursued w- – would he be a candidate in New England if Belichick is – uh? Not there. Would, would he be a candidate at Ohio State if a Ryan Day gets an NFL job? Like, like I, I, I think there are exit ramps for Mike Vrabel. I, I think, I think the Titans with Tannehill have a great chance to win this game. Uh, Ryan Day to the NFL is that a rumor? I, I hadn't heard that. No, it's not. It's not, I'm just throwing it out. Though. Like, like I mean, he he's been a quarterback coach in the league, and I mean, right. there, there are there are a million Ohio State fans that would love to get rid of him right now because apparently he's yeah. the the, the the worst coach in college football. And I mean, he's lost like eight games in five years and played for the national title and uh, was was a was a missed field goal away and a Marvin Harrison Jr. concussion last year from winning the title. So I mean, he's, he's a terrible coach, clearly. So Ohio State, I I, I was kind of like a subtle little jab at Ohio State fans. Hey, you you you, you want him gone? It'd be careful what you wish for. Yeah, I mean, I look, he's done it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that w- that was not a good performance against Missouri. Not to dip our toe back in college, and, and when you lose to Michigan, the heat's <laughs> going to be on. So I'm sure the heat is on him. Um, no, that that's. But to get back to your main point, the Jags shouldn't be laying five and a half, six to anybody. Remember, the Jags ended the Titans' season last year, so maybe the Titans want a little payback. We saw Vrabel in the pes- press conference the other day get fired up, like, "Hey, nobody likes to lose. I hate losing." I remember, like Jags Titans played th- this time last year for the division. Titans had a late lead. That was with Dobbs at quarterback. Like the Jags were at home. They needed a fumble return for touchdown yep, to win that there. game. So these games are always close. Um, I, I would definitely take the points. This line is just completely over and played. Titans aren't that they're not a good team by any stretch, but they're not that bad. They've lost a couple of close games where they could be, you know, with the bounce of the ball right in this race for the AFC South too. I mean, they're what, a couple wins behind the Texans and the Colts of the world. I mean, they've lost a few of these games, the Seahawks. Uh, one, one of these other games in overtime last play. So the Titans aren't that far from the Jags, in my opinion. Eagles, Giants. I mean, every week we see them. Out. I mean, the Eagles need to Eagles need to show something, kind of kind of get it together, get right themselves back on track for the playoffs. And, and uh, you, you gave up a 15 point halftime lead at home. And you, you, you then it was, the, the amazing thing is that they had the 15 point lead to begin with, because if you watch the game, Arizona yeah. did whatever the hell they wanted on offense. Yeah. Like the Eagles defensively are an absolute mess right now. Uh, Giants have, t- have taken money. It's down to five uh, from an open of six and a half uh, laying five on the road from like the locker room. Front. Who, who the hell knows? Clearly the Eagles uh, have issues. Um, we, we, would you lay it here in hopes that they can get back on track here or, or the giants kind of with, with, with Bar- you look at what they did a couple of weeks ago in, in Philly very easily could have sent that game to overtime after the Eagles went up and down the field. Is this a, is this maybe more of an over game? Maybe again, you got to worry about the weather, but the totals dropped down to 42. Is there a point Sammy where maybe you would consider playing the over in this game? I hate to keep saying no, but you're, I will commend you, Bear. You're doing a good job That's of good. Like leading us into stuff. It's just this week sucks to gamble <laughs> on. I'll, I'll say it so nobody else has to. This is a very tough week. And I, I think, you know, we're all in these contests in Vegas and, you know, you got to get to five mm-hmm. games ATS. And I'm at like two and a quarter right now out of five. I, I got I got three days left to get to a full five and – I, I guess it'd be Giants or pass. I mean, it's it's a lot different with Terod Taylor instead of Tommy DeVito. We all understand that. And mm-hmm. something's clearly up with this Eagles team. I mean, there's there's something also to be said about these teams that have just been perennially good at putting away teams like this. But they let the Giants hang around on Christmas. I mean, that was that was a close game. So it's been a weird year for Philly. They still have a bunch of talent. They still play to a high power rating. But I mean, this thing got blasted. They opened six and a half, six, and now it's down to five. So respected play took the dog. What are the Eagles playing for here? I mean, if the Cowboys get a lead and, you know, we talked about this is the same situation last year, shoes on the other foot. Like if you see the Cowboys have the lead, 
Does Philly say, hey, maybe we're going to rest some guys. Maybe we'll get our guys healthy. We'll treat this as like a mini buy. Hertz has been banged up. Our defense is a mess. Let's just, you know what? They probably go into this not or knowing, thinking that Washington is not going to give them any help. This is not for the division. This is really not for anything. So uh, to me, the, the motivation here is very questionable for Philly. That's why I like the Giants. Giants could have beaten the Rams last week. I mean, the Rams are everybody's darling, everybody's sleeper. If Crosby yeah. makes a kick, I mean, that, that game is a, a Giants victory. So Taylor's much better to me. Field goal game, if nothing else, I, I wouldn't be shocked if the Giants won. I just don't know where Philly's head's at and, you know, if they really care about this game. They asked their coach, Nick Sirianni, sort of about the idea about playing time. And if you're scoreboard watching, he said, basically said, yes, like I will be watching the score of yeah. the Cowboys commanders game and sort of figuring out where my team Good. is at, because look, they've had a tough schedule. Like getting some rest is, is important. And if you look up at halftime and the commanders are down 14 points, they're probably not coming back. And so you just, you slowly take your starters out. You, 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 you know, you let Hertz rest. You let Lane Johnson rest. You bring out Kelsey. You let your older pass rushers get out the field and giants um, again, nothing to play for, but I think they're going to play hard. still. we've seen all season long I mean, they played hard last weekend and they played against it mentioned Philly the, a couple weekends ago. So I think giants plus the points here is a good, is a good wager to be on. We're, we're going to weave another like award question in here. We did it with the, with the coach of the year stuff with uh, Texans Colts. Like, Jalen Carter was like a massive price to win defensive rookie of the year. Uh, but with how poor the Eagles defense has been lately, and, and we saw Colby Turner take a, a bunch of money this week, and uh, Gil Alexander on VSIN had, had uh, the story about how Jason Weingarten got him added to, a, to the Caesars, I think it was the Caesars menu, and he made the bet after reading a Rams blogger story about comparing uh, Turner's numbers to Carter uh, and, and Will Anderson. So like, uh, Will, I'll start with you. Like, do, do we think like there's, there, there's smoke here? Do we still think Carter wins or, or like, or Anderson or Turner a potentially viable candidate? Like, do we think the Eagles late season swoon is going to cause voters to kind of reassess what they thought uh, just because of how we, how bad the Eagles have been? Boy, this is the one award I've thought the least about. I've bet the least. I would say Anderson's live, though, and you, know, you don't want to put team success on a player, but if if the Texans win that game Saturday night and Anderson has a big game, you know, he gets a sack or forces a fumble, fumble recover, whatever, uh, I could see Anderson stealing this award. If you shop around, you could find Anderson at 3-1. to one. There was a book in Connecticut yesterday, Bear, at Anderson almost 5-1. to one. So shop around. There's a big disparity. I know one book has Carter minus 150. Other books, he's like minus 450. So if I had to make a bet here, I, I would think it was Anderson. Again, this is not an award I've studied. To be honest, Like as much as we talk about these games, bet these games, like Kobe Turner was not on my radar uh, until yesterday. I'm like, who, what? Why is he 5-1 to one in some spots? So to me, it'd be Anderson yep. or nothing. Mm -hmm. Sammy, I don't know if you have anything here. Well, the good thing for Anderson in this matchup is that the Texans are outstanding against the run. I think number two in DVOA against the run, and that's really all Indy wants to do. So, I mean, maybe there's a, a big game for, for Anderson, a couple tackles for loss. Maybe it's like, you know, 10 tackles or something like that. Who knows? I mean, I, I think it's it's definitely a point in time where I'm not going to lay anywhere from 150 to 450 on Jalen Carter. So that second guy oftentimes – uh, could have some value because the books don't really know how to price the favorite. And again, these are all markets that are predicated on how people vote, not on a statistical thing or not on a team winning a game. I mean, this is all up to voters. And and oftentimes, you know, late in the season, these voters haven't made their decisions um, yet. So, yeah, if Will Anderson comes out and dominates Indianapolis and keeps him out of the playoffs, then he's going to get more love. The voters right now are starting to make their calls and starting to talk to people about what they're doing. So if you see numbers move, I think it's because the, the, they're thinking about voting for certain guys. Um, you know, I've, I've talked to people about like all pro offensive line uh, decisions, which obviously you can't wager on, but you know, the, so the voters are starting to, 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 you know, to, to do their it's research winning. and to start reaching out to people and getting advice on, on who to vote for. And, and the all pro voters take it seriously. Like they, they really do, you know, not all the same, all pro voters typically have votes for the other awards as well. They start doing their, so this is the time of year. So if you see someone moving like this, it's probably because the voters are thinking about wagering on the individual. And Sammy's right. They haven't done it yet. So like they, there's still time. If Will Anderson heads up with a sack and a forced fumble and a big name, maybe, maybe he moves up. But I think, I think they're starting to move because voters are leaning in, in, in a certain direction right now. And Turner and his team, the Rams, kind of a 
kind of a dead rubber game. I mean, Niners are the one seed. Rams are in the playoff. I guess there there is seeding. And, and, and again, you, you this is going to be no Stafford, no Purdy, no McCaffrey. I would imagine Aaron Donald probably wouldn't play. Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold. Let's go. Exactly. This could be a... Uh, I like what, what, what's the, uh, stay away. What's the turnover? I mean, there are probably some turnover <laughs> props you could play in this game. Like both, both quarterbacks to throw an interception over under like six turnovers combined or something like, like, I mean, that's the thing. Maybe in a, in a, in a game like this, maybe there is a creative, uh, way to play this, but, but I, I certainly want like, th- this would be, will the there game be a I defensive score? No part of it. Will there be a defensive that, that, score? That, you can bet those. That, that, that. That's another good one. Yeah. Yeah. Just shows you the unpredictability of the draft, man. It's not that long ago where these the, these guys were not only getting picked very high. What Wentz was second, Darnold was fifth. I mean, these teams were trading up a bundle of assets to get Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. He was I the mean, he was the Eagle savior. It's crazy. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, Sam, Sam Darnold was, was the, the the heir apparent for the Jets, and he he he's the Monday guy night against got Detroit. New- yeah. Yep. Yep, this is it. I feel as good about the Jets quarterback situation as I as I ever have, and then that would all went all went downhill from there. But yeah, I, I, I Sammy, I'm a, I'm, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to say it. Uh, Rams, Rams, Niners, anything? No me gusta, Senor Bear. No me gusta. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I and A there. I appreciate the uh, appreciate the little curveball there, Jet Jeff. I know you. I know you got something on this one, right? Zero. Zero. Perfect. No, not going to spend. It will not be on one of the TVs. It will. I mean, unless we're doing a Carson Wentz interception prop. Otherwise, I'm not touching this game. Yeah, I, I Bear, can't, I, we got to talk I, look, about how nervous probably... we are about Buffalo. We, we buried the lead here. Well, I'm, we getting all I'm getting there. Well, I'm getting there. I'm about it's, it's, it's all about it's all, it's all about build. It's all about the Daniel Ma building it up to to the climax of the uh, uh, of the story. And yeah, we're, we're, I mean, I think we've gotten through all the all all the dreck. And now I'm going to have the biggest game of the weekend, uh, winning in for, for both Bu- winner wins the division. Maybe the bills go home. Uh, I know the dolphins have a million injuries, but again, this feels like a pretty, I, I know the bills won by a million in the first game uh, up in Buffalo earlier this year, but laying three here on the road with how that offense, I mean, they didn't do anything offensively last week, Sammy against you, against the Patriots. It was, it, it was Bailey Zappi throwing the ball over the place and people dropping it on the ground and Buffalo returning it. So like, like you, you have any interest in laying three here with the bill, Sammy? No, I'm not doing that. I, I think under is a pretty decent bet because I think when we think about, when we close our eyes and think about bills and dolphins, we think about offense. Josh Allen leads the league in touchdowns. I believe he's got 42. When we think about Miami, we think about Tua and Tyree kill and Jalen Waddle. Well, Waddle's not playing in this game. Um, so I, I look at how Buffalo's defense is played. I mean, their defense has gotten them to back to respectability and Miami, you know, Vic Fangio has done a decent job over the course of the season. This is also a tight game. I mean, both of these teams are probably going to not take a lot of shots down the field, given the injuries on the offensive line and the injuries on offense. So I, this man, this could be like a, a 23, 20 type final. Definitely not going to lay three. And I did see this. I get these emails from sports books all the time. And I I don't want to like say anything crazy here, but like the Damn, number on. one playoff market bet coming into this week is Buffalo to make the playoffs at minus 700. And I'm like, oh, God, if you're at the point <laughs> in your life where you're laying oh Buffalo <laughs> minus 700 to make $7. the playoffs, I just... I mean, I know it's not the same bet because they have like an 85% chance to get you to minus 700. But if you're at that point in your life, just lay the money line, right? Just lay Bill's money line yep. Yes. at minus yep. 160 because, you know, if they win the game, they're in. It's not the same bet because if they do lose and other teams lose, they're going to get in. But you can't be laying 700 on Buffalo to make the playoffs. No. <laughs> Uh, I have, I'm going to try to middle this because Will talked about this, I think, what, three weeks ago now? Will, you, you said Bill's AFC East was plus 265. So I, I took Last that. Week, I thought it was a great ago. wager at that time. Yeah. It was, whatever it was, I, I took it. And so I'm going to just take Dolphins plus three and try to middle. That's, I'm take, that's how I'm playing this game. I don't really have a thought otherwise, like who's going to win, who's not. I think it's the Bills to me. 
their variants, you don't know. Are you getting good Buffalo, bad Buffalo, hero ball, Josh Allen, non-hero ball? The Dolphins are beat up. But, you know, you mentioned their Bills defense is playing better, but now we're facing a much better offense than we faced recently. So I'm going to sit with uh, with those wagers and, and hopefully and hopefully middle it. And, and doesn't in, in a, Buffalo in these big games, we saw them in the playoffs against Kansas City and whatever else, like their kind of best play is Josh Allen running. Like if he's got a bad shoulder, he's got that stinger. Like can't you see this being a more of a, a cautious Buffalo type type offense, maybe he doesn't run it as much, and maybe they do kind of rely on that defense uh, will against a very kind of shorthanded uh, Dolphins offense. Yeah, I mean, if if you're suggesting a Josh Allen under rushing prop, that would scare me. It would depend if they take the field where, hey, if winning you're in, lose you're out. They could take the field where, I mean, this is going to be for the division no matter what, but they could take the field where, hey, we already got a spot, but we're mm-hmm. just playing for seeding. Not that that's not important, but that does change the dynamic. Um, I, I do like Sammy's um, under because there's just so many injuries. Offensive line for Miami, Waddle, who I think is underrated, and he's always hurt, but he's very important. Even Hill's a little banged up. He hasn't had the monster games recently. You mentioned Allen with the stinger. Tua went into the tent last week. Uh, with with Brady as the offensive coordinator, Buffalo's r- run the ball a lot more. So to me, yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked if we see, like I think Sammy threw out 23-20. That would make sense. I would just, I'd be careful of an, an Allen under rushing prop if they need this game to get in because because that's their break glass in case right. of emergency sort of sort of uh, game plan here. So fun game. I mean, that's, this is the Sunday night game. This last game of the season, man, the season just just flew by. And there, there's some drama here. It'd be interesting. You know, it's funny. You mentioned the minus 700 to, to make the playoffs. It's not that crazy that they miss. Like they would need an upset. If they don't win their game, they need an upset to get in because I think it's they need either a Jacksonville loss or they need a Pittsburgh loss, which again, neither is impossible. Yeah. But yes. uh, right. they're far from in here. That's what I was going to say. Like they, they, they'll, you talk about how they may know on Sunday when they hate the field. Yeah. If Pittsburgh loses to, to the Ravens, they're in. Uh, if Houston, Indianapolis ends in a tie, they're in. Or if Jacksonville loses earlier in the day, they're in. So, I mean, they, they, they'll know at that, at that point, And then ultimately we'll just be playing for the division, getting that first, that, that first game at home, as opposed to, uh, to going on the road and probably playing Kansas city. Right, Jeff? Um, there was, I saw yeah. there's like, there's, uh, it's not, if they're in, if they're the sixth seed, excuse me, if they lose the Dolphins and make the playoffs, they'd be the sixth seed. Yes. There was like four of 32 scenarios where that would happen. Uh, otherwise it's Miami. If the Miami loses, they're the sixth seed. I don't know if I'd necessarily be too worried about going to Kansas city. I mean, I know I'd much rather host the Colts as a wild card with other. That's also, oh, I'm, yes. I'm, exactly. I'm, as yes. a Chiefs Correct. fan, I'm rooting for the Dolphins this weekend. Yeah, I would, Buffalo out of the playoffs would be much more much preferred as a fan. And, and and that yeah, that's that that's the thing. Like if you if you're the Dolphins and you know Buffalo needs to need, needs to win, like you 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 you're damn right. You're trying to win that game and keep oh, Buffalo yeah. out of playoffs. Uh, That'd be a hell of a round that, one game sure. though. Bills Chiefs round one. Man, that's uh boy. I'm sure I'm sure the networks oh. are rooting for that. That would be just an incredible game. That would be great. But I'll tell you what, yeah, that, it that, would not be as good. As McVay against Paul Bunyan, Dan Campbell. That would be, oh my God. In, in, yep. I'd have to go to the bank to bet that game. Uh, so you can get a nice, easy, a nice, easy flight too. A little, uh, I mean, Lo- Logan to DTW, Delta, plenty sure. of non stops each, each, each day. You could, you, we'll, go, we'll, 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 go, we'll get you some tickets for that game. You can go see your, uh, go see your guy up close and personal. What's the number for that he game, would, honestly, Sammy? He would smush me, too. Dan Campbell would crush me with one hand, and I know that, but it's still funny. Oh, five, absolutely. probably. What? What's the number? Lions in favor by five? I would think so. Five and a half, six, maybe? Yeah. No, hey, as I say oh, six, I'm Rams. like, Rams. I don't know. Rams plus six, I'm I, taking a heartbeat. I, see, I was going to say, at six, I'm taking the Rams in that game in a, in, in a second, I think. You you were talking earlier about like the 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 Lions. Oh, I want that game at home. Like, I mean, they they've already lost to the Seahawks at home. They've lost to the Packers at home. Should have lost to the Bears at home. Like, I, yeah, I get you want a home game, but it's not like that. Their home field has been any any great. Home it's field. more about Jared Goff not having to play outside. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right. I mean, isn't it kind of crazy that we're at a point where like a playoff team they they can't play outside because their quarterback is 
just can't function in cold weather. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a crazy storyline. So, so Circa put up a really interesting prop uh, th- this week, and I- I'd like to get all of your opinions on it. They put up Super Bowl champion, 49ers and Ravens versus the field. And I think it, they opened it at minus 115 uh, either way. Uh, before I let you know how I feel, I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to pollute your mind, and, and, and I don't want to lead you in any direction, Sam, because I've already been accused of leading you in a direction multiple times uh, during the, this show. But like, you get you get the Ravens and the 49ers versus the field, or or, or the other way. What way are you going, Sammy? I'd take the favorites. Two one seeds just got to win I mean, two either, games on their home field. These are two of the most dominant teams we've seen. Um, in a long, long time. I mean, I think the gap in the NFC is substantial between San Francisco and everybody else. I mean, I we all watch Baltimore pound San Francisco, but who's going into San Francisco and, and beating them? You know, I mean, is it really going to be? Do we really think McCarthy and Dak are going to do it? I'm not there. I I don't believe in Detroit. The Rams are sort of trendy, but I, I mean, it's, it's going to be San Francisco likely. And then um, you know, Baltimore's got got to get through potentially Mahomes and uh, maybe Josh Allen, but I I still think that is one of the most underrated great teams that we've seen. So I, I would take the favorites. I would for sure. Yeah, I take well, the ones too. I think if you get a rematch uh, of the Christmas game in the Super Bowl, if you get the one season Super Bowl, you automatically win that bet. Somebody, one of those teams is going to win. I kind of think we're headed that way. I, I'll go with the chalk here. Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't bet it on any other team outside of Kansas City, and that's just basically because you're betting on Patrick Mahomes that do some crazy stuff in the playoffs, right? I mean, they're wide receivers. The Bengals game was a little bit better. MVS only dropped one pass <laughs> instead of multiple <laughs> passes. And, How many did he have thrown at him? And, and, and Kadarius Tony didn't play, so he couldn't drop any passes. I mean, the thing about it is if you look at the, like, the rest of the AFC, the Chiefs' defense is Super Bowl worthy. You can't say that about the Dolphins, I don't think, right now, or or, or but like Again, their offense is not very good, and going to Baltimore and winning that game would be a very, very tough ask. Um, I think that that just feels unlikely to happen. So I think the favorites are the, are the player. That is my concern with this wager. What what just happened here? San Francisco, Baltimore, San Francisco, Baltimore, San Francisco, Baltimore. It feels kind of like what, what happened prior to the Rose Bowl, with the exception of Sammy, who had Michigan. Everybody liked them, and it feels like everybody's going to be attracted to the two one seeds. And it almost feels like at that number minus 115, it's uh, Jeff Benson and Circa basically saying, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, two one seeds got to win two games. Each got to win two games on the home field to get to the Super Bowl and your, your, your guarantee. And ca- yeah, but- now, and that leads me to the, to the other side. And, and this is the question I think is the natural follow-up to this. If you can't have San Francisco and Baltimore, Give me one team from the AFC and one team from the NFC. Who do you think, Jeff? And I'll start with you. I mean, it would be Kansas City still. I think that's it. you'd have to wager on would be Kansas City. I don't know. I mean, do you trust Buffalo, the Dolphins? I mean, all these teams don't. Dolphins, have, I think, are a, non, a non-player for me. I the, think these teams just, too, too, don't have a lot of playoff experience and a lot of playoff wins. Kansas City obviously does. And you could their defense, is, their defense is Super Bowl caliber. Like, you can get by winning 2017. It's harder to do, obviously, when your margin of error is that small. God, the NFC guys, I, oh, I mean, <laughs> I, look, I trust McVay and Stafford probably the most for the coach, coach and quarterback combination, but their team is not as good as the as the Cowboys, right? I mean, no. they're not, um, but they play the Niners tough each game. So, like, they'd be the, maybe the toughest opponent to play for the Niners. I guess, jeez, oh, Cowboys. Cow, no one Cowboys. No one. <laughs> Sammy, how about, how about you? I, seeing the Cowboys gives me. I the was going to say. I was going to go Eagles in the NFC and Bills in the AFC. Wow. Well, to me, it's it's Cowboys and Bills. I think the Eagles are a dead duck. They're going to be the five. They're going to have to go on the road. They they seem like a mess. I just think Cowboys are good. I mean, McCarthy gets a, a little bit of a pass because of what all the nonsense Campbell did, but McCarthy throwing that ball late. How in the, the hell is he getting a pass insane. for that? Absolutely insane, but that's a good. I nearly team. fell off my couch offense. when he did that. Insane, absolutely insane. But I'll just go talent. Cowboys, Bills. That's that would be my answer. Cow, cow, Cowboys, 
The Bills Probably. might not make the playoffs this weekend. I, that's a, that's well, a, isn't it crazy? Like, yep. have we ever talked about a team like this? Yep. Have we ever no. talked about a team like this before? Where like they're not even guaranteed to be in the playoffs, and most people would take them as like the second team in the AFC right I'm now. I'm curious Maybe to see the what they have the third weekend. highest power rating in football. I mean, yeah, right. I mean that's that's why we're talking. Yep. I mean, it goes sure. it goes Niners, Ravens, Bills. I'm curious to see what what their Super Bowl odds will be. If they do wind up getting it, like, like, what, like, what are they right now? Like 13, four, 13 to one, 14 to one, I think something like that. Like what will, what will they be if they do get into the playoffs? I'm curious to see what kind of drop they will, they will, uh, they will chop have to say. Half, probably, Obviously yes. they will be the, the probably, I was going to say probably chop it in half. would be like the, the, the third, third choice behind the right. two, one seeds. Um, any other uh, games out there or, or, or awards anything that we that we that we haven't mentioned i mean i think we did do get through most of these games but i think there might have been a game or two we didn't touch on if there's something out there that either you guys are uh in on do we think aaron Rodgers plays this week i mean he's supposed to come back this year right i mean when's he is he, is he, is he suiting up? <laughs> well, I, I, the, the, I, I would think there's a good chance that he might like if it's going to be cold chance. in New England, that yeah. probably that probably means his Achilles and his lower leg will be sure. really, really numb from the cold, and he won't be able to feel it. So I can see him getting out there uh, in, in New England, kind of kind of running around and giving Jets fans hope for what might be next year, especially behind Ugh. that really good Jets offensive line. But like, yeah, I, I think this I think there's a chance Rogers plays this week. You want to say something, Jeff? I can tell. I think he he needs to worry about getting a lawyer before he needs to worry about getting back on the field at this moment. So good luck, good luck with that, buddy. Um, so I'm gonna get a bunch of people coming in here and be like, "That's not libel." It's a joke, everyone. Yeah, exactly. Take, take, take a deep breath. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean that's just Rogers every week, man. Just what the attention that this guy needs is, and we give it to him. We talk about him. It's our fault, guys. We, we give him the attention he wants. Compare and contrast: Aaron Rodgers, his Achilles; Kirk Cousins and his Achilles. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. On, on that note, before I, we all, before I get us into any more trouble, uh, we'll, 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 we'll call it a wrap here for the regular season. We'll be back next week to uh, preview the, for the, the first round of the NFL playoffs and the entire playoffs. Hope you guys have a great week. Appreciate it as always. Another great gambling goop chat as we hit week 18. A lot, a lot of nuggets in there for you guys as you head into a, a weird weekend of uh, wagering the National Football League. I'm so excited to watch Jets Patriots now. I'm going to watch it just for Sammy. Just I'm going to put on one of those TVs, like one of the, the four boxes, you know, on the, on the uh, Sunday ticket. Just going to be up there. The snow falling, just rooting for, for field goals to be missed and interceptions. It's just be ugliness. Beautiful. All right, Bear. We have two bets so far you have made. Before we get to our best bets. You have the Arizona Cardinals plus three hosting Seattle. And you have the, the uh, Broncos plus three on the road at the Raiders. What is your best bet for Week 18 in the National Football League? I like the Colts getting one and a half at home against the Texans in a uh, a win and in game for, for, the, for the playoffs. Um, I think the Texans uh, certainly offensively have some flaws now with the receivers, injuries that they've had. Stroud is back, but... Going on the road, I mean, the Colts team that beat them already in Houston this year. Um, Colts were not great by any means last week uh, at home against the Raiders. But uh, I think at home here, and, and I kind of like when the line flips where the Colts open as a favorite, and now they're an underdog. Uh, I think I think that, again, I have no numbers to, yeah. to, to, to point out whether that's a profitable angle or not. Um, I don't know if anybody does, but... I, I just I, I look at it kind of like the uh, people people I, I kind of look at it uh, kind of closing line value in a, in, in a weird way where I'm getting a, uh, a team that was favored that's now an underdog and I'm getting points so I, I like playing teams like that and I think the Colts get this win at home I think they make the playoffs. Uh, does it worry you the Colts just have some absolute stinkers in the last month? Of course, yeah, <laughs> but most of them have been on the road. Yes. Yeah. And they did. And look, they were, even though they did not cover last weekend, they were up for most of that. Yeah. Game yeah, they, the yeah I was going to say, yeah, I think they fall by three nothing early, I think, and then led from there on out. It was a very, it was a very late touchdown. There, there's a number for the, the, the number moving like that. I'm trying to find her for you, uh, to, to kind of back you up when, when, when you go from being a favorite to being mm. a dog like that, we'll, we'll get it by the, hopefully by the end here. Um, 
Oh, here it is right here. Ready? So 2005, teams whose spreads moved by one or more points in their direction the last game of the regular season. Oh, this actually doesn't hurt. I don't think this actually helps you, Bear. I thought it was going to help you. 44% against the spread. Huh? Here you go. Did, 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 what, do you, what do you think? Oh, no. No, I, I, I think I think you're – no, this is opposite. Oh. No, this did yeah, did, I think I think Oh you know, you're right. Yeah, because it goes yeah. because Houston becomes the yeah, favorite. Yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. So you're good. Okay, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Thank Houston you. be 44 against there you go. See, I found it. I knew I'd find it for you guys. Great podcasting right there. All right. <laughs> My best bet for the games this weekend. I'm going Chiefs team total over 15 and a half. It's a very low number because Patrick Mahomes is not playing, guys. As I mentioned earlier, though, the rest of the team has to play. Like they they might be out Travis Kelsey. But everyone else is playing. Their offensive line is going to have to play. They don't have enough dudes. So you got to play everyone. Uh, the Chiefs have been in this spot three times before with Andy Reid. I've been in one of these games, 2013, one on the road to uh, Los Angeles. I mean, San Diego at that point, when we put up uh, 24 points. 2017, Patrick Mahomes' first start ever. He put up 21 points. And then 2020, they hosted the Chargers in the same spot. They lost 38-21, scored 21 points, though. Blaine Gabbert's getting the first start of the year. He wants to play well. They're going to scheme up to try to win the football game, obviously. Uh, 15 and a half is just a low number. I know the Chiefs offense isn't great, Bear, but by any means, but they're still going to try to score points because that's their job in this game. So uh, Blaine Gabbert's going to want to score. Give me Chiefs over 15 and a half here. I like that. And do you, do you think that there's some kind of feeling within the Chiefs, like we don't care who it is at quarterback, who it is at receiver, who it is at running. Like we just need to score points. Oh, yeah. Like, like get get I, I, through the mental hurdle. So Andy Reid is <clears throat> Andy Reid has always rested his starters in the spot. And I was curious if this year he would change his mind because of the offense. Now, obviously he hasn't. Their rest differential has been pretty bad this the last month. This he's like he needs guys to rest a little bit. But yeah, I mean, look, most of what series are going to play. Travis Kelsey won't play, but most of the offensive line are going to play. Pacheco probably doesn't play, but the rest right. of the running backs are gonna, guys are going to want to get reps for the first time this season. So uh, Chiefs over fifteen and a half is where I'm leaning. Not leaning. I have wagered on it. We're embedded. There you go. I can see that. That's it. We did it. We did what? Did a podcast. <sighs> yes, we did. Yeah. Group chat was fun. It was good, yeah. Yeah. Sammy just has no wagers ever except for two yeah. games. Nope. No, nope. Nope. No, no, no thoughts. Nope. No thoughts. Nope. Yeah. Before we get out of here, though, I have one more thing to do. Super six. You, I was. I was. I wasn't sure where you it's were. It's not too late that. to play the free Fox Super Six game for Week 18. Just download the Fox Sports app right now. Make your picks for a chance to win your share of ten thousand dollars in weekly cash prizes. Column will be up soon. One handed column. Yeah, we might. We, we might like. Are are, might, are you doing like talk to text thing? That's your... exactly what I do. I put give give a little voice memo. Yeah. Send it over to uh, send it over to Vic and. He transcribed it for, it for you. Me. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot easier than me doing that. The pecking. Next, I can't really lift that one, up. Yeah, one exactly. finger peck. All right, we did it. We, we, we did it. We, we 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 pecked our way through another through another uh, another episode. It's a fun season. Playoffs will will be here soon enough. So oh, yeah. obviously we'll be continuing uh, with the NFL NFL season through the Super Bowl. Uh, should be a lot to talk about with the playoffs. It seems. Uh, Listen to listen to those guys. It, it, it's going to be San Francisco, Baltimore. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Nothing can possibly happen in the NFL Never. to to to, to cause a, an upset or, no. or or get a uh, a crazy participant in the uh, no, in the to Super be fair, Bowl. Like for ten years in a row, a team with a bye made the playoffs. I mean, made, made, made the Super Bowl for like ten years. Both ones last year. Too, Only right? recently yeah. has it been like Tampa Bay, yeah. the Bengals. It has typically, for the most part, been the one or two seed when they had a buy. Both, who both made, ones who, last year, and the odds are maybe, but, I mean, maybe, 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 maybe both ones again. So, for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, I'm Bear. Appreciate everybody again for downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, checking us out on the YouTube channel. Most importantly, always remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>